Food Web. All living things need energy to survive, but where do they get that energy? While food chains can give a simple, linear overview of how different organisms can get their energy, a food chain shows how complex an ecosystem really is. Within an ecosystem, there are producers, consumers, and decomposers. Producers are living things that produce their own food. Producers like plants and phytoplankton use the sun's energy along with carbon dioxide and water to produce their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Consumers are living things that have to get their food from an outside source. Decomposers play a critical role in eating dead matter to provide nutrients to the soil. When a consumer eats plants, it is called a primary consumer. This is because it's getting its energy from the primary source that creates it, the producers. When a consumer eats a primary consumer, they are considered secondary consumers. Tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers. Consumers are at the top of the food web are identified as apex predators. This shows just a simple food chain of producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and apex predators. However, an ecosystem is more complex. This diagram shows a simple version of a food web within an ocean ecosystem. Notice how an organism can be a different level of consumer depending on what it eats. The seal, for instance, may eat the secondary consumer herring or the tertiary consumer squid. As it moves higher up in the food web, it obtains less energy. That is because only 10% of the energy from the level below gets passed on. A disruption in the number of resources available at any of the levels can have a major effect on all the organs within a food web. The removal of an apex predator like the shark could cause an increase in the tuna and seal population. This in turn could cause a decrease in the herring and squid populations. Overfishing of herring could cause a decrease in the tuna and seal population due to the limitation of food, which could also cause a decrease in the shark population. For an ecosystem to thrive, there needs to be a balance between all levels of the food web. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.